The question we try to answer right now is, what are the domain and range of each of these relations? Okay. By the way, I should point out, the vast majority of these things are also functions, but they're not asking you which ones they are right now, which is why they use the general word, relations. It could be anything. Okay. Now, domain and range. Think back to your definition from Monday. What does domain, what does it mean? Or real any x values. Okay. Now, be careful, because here, like, Definitions have to be specific because if you get them a little bit off, they tend to be so concise and succinct. And if you get a little bit off, you get something completely different, right? So I would start with your phrase, all x values, but I'm not going to finish there. It's all x values that what? The limit of all x values. I'm going to, I see what you're thinking of, I'm going to avoid the word limit because limit will mean something very specific later on, even though it's sort of, as a common sense word, does make sense. I'm going to start with all x values for which the relation is defined, or for where the graph exists. Does that make sense? Let me say that again. All x values where the function is defined, all x values where the function, sorry, the graph, can exist. So the one that I first got asked about was this one, part B. Okay? Now, it just looks weird for starters. Okay, We haven't dealt with it formally. I'm going to deal with this a bit later in this topic. It's what we call a piecemeal function. Right? So see this guy here? This is a parabola, it's just one piece. I could guess, actually I don't have to guess, this is gonna be y equals, uh, let's see, x, that's like x minus two, and when x equals one, yeah, perfect, that's the graph. Okay, so this is x squared minus two x. You're used to seeing things like this. This is the name of the function, this is the actual expression of the function. But this is weird. There isn't one single equation that can describe both parts of this. Okay? I'll show you a little bit later on how you would write something like this so that in some areas you're one thing and in other areas you're something else. But let's just de deal with the question of domain and range. Okay? Domain first. Which x values, which x values does that graph go through? Let's start with the easy part first. See these uh, filled and hollow circles? This is borrowing language, visual language, from the inequalities and stuff that you draw on the number line, remember? What does a filled circle mean? You count that. It means you count that point, right? In this case, the point is one, right? So just looking at this right-hand part, you go from one, you include one, and then you go all the way, and there's nothing to indicate like an asymptote or something like that to say you've got to stop, you can't go past here. So that arrow is telling me go all the way. So I guess I would write that part as x is greater than or equal to 1. Are you okay with that? Now when you then move over to the left hand side, you've got a hollow circle. What does that mean? It means don't include that point. Okay? But then it says, okay, now go all the way to the left. And again, there's no indication that it ever stops. Right? So how would you describe the domain of this part? X is less than 1. And we don't include the boundary. But here's the thing, if you put this and this together, right, because they're all part of one graph, right, it's like, okay, I have all of these values over here, and then at one, I stop. But then that's okay, because here, this guy picks up, this guy takes over, as it were, okay? I could change this question very gently to make it not the case. If I, for example, put a hollow circle there, right, what would that mean? Yeah, I wouldn't include this boundary, would I, right? So in that case, what we would have is this um, discontinuity, this break. When x equals 1, what does this relation equal to? Answer, nothing. There's no defined point for it. But the graph they've actually given us, it's film. Okay? So therefore, the domain for this, the total domain, is all real values of x. They're defined. They all go and they all work. Now you can help me answer the range question. Right? Again, help me think, where does the graph exist? Up and down. This is a bit easier to think about. It just goes from y equals negative 1. Does it include y equals negative 1? No. So I'm about to write a non-inclusive and exclusive inequality. Right? Y is going to be above that point. And then that's it. That's all you have to say. That is the range. Okay. Does it make sense? Now, just really quickly, this has not been posed by the question, but it's sort of a natural question to leads from it. Why do they do this? Why do they make this awkward, like, hollow circle, field circle thing? And the answer is, if it was two field circles, this is now a relation, 
Well, it always was a relation, right? But it can't be a function. Why? Because now, if you take, you can think about this two ways. If you take the uh, vertical line, right? You take your vertical line. There is exactly one point where you intersect twice, right? So therefore, you've got one input, one x value, which has two outputs. That's no good, right? So what they want. What, the, what they'll be intending to do is to make sure to restrict it such that it is a function. Now when I put the vertical line through, at every point, I only intersect once. Does that make sense? Now while I have your attention and while it's on the board, do you want to ask me about any of these other ones? Pick a letter, any letter. <laughs> K. K? Which one's K? Yeah, of course, these weird, weird jerks. Okay, whatever, that's fine. So, this guy down here, very strange. For starters, let's just look at that question I was mentioning before. Is this a function or a relation? Relation. It's a relation. It clearly fails the vertical line test pretty badly, in fact. So I can draw lines here or here and they'll intersect twice. One input, multiple outputs. That's no good. Okay? In fact, like if you draw like here, you get one, two, three, that, that kind of size. Okay? But now when we think about domain. Domain. Are there any x values that you can find where the function doesn't exist, where the graph doesn't go? The answer is no. In fact, you can go all the way here, go all the way there. In the middle, you can go multiple times. So therefore, just like before, the domain will be x is all real values. When you think about range, it's a little trickier. Now, I'm going to do just like I did before. I'm going to think about each of the branches, the pieces, step one step at a time. Let's have a look at the top part. There's a hollow circle. The value there is 1, and then it just goes up and it never stops. Okay? So how would you express this range? Y greater than 1. 1 and above. Then when you look at this guy, there's a filled circle here. So then it goes down with no sign of stopping. So that would be y is less than or equal to negative 1. So it's this or this, and that's it. So I guess when you look at something like that, don't be intimidated by the weirdness of it. Just think about it one piece at a time and you'll be able to work out the domain range quite easily. Okay. 